Speak, Lord Jesus, now, even through me. As you challenge our hearts together. Let your Holy Spirit, Lord, move forth upon the hearts of your children. And let your word come alive in our hearts, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Which was struggling through persecution. Their faith was being put to the test. And they must now prove whether the God they serve was equal to the challenges they were facing. In challenging and difficult situations, we tend not to turn to God as our first response. Many times it is only when we have failed and discover that there is no way out that we remember that there is a God who promises never to leave us nor to forsake us. A God who is always by our side and is waiting for us to engage in faith. But God is always there, my brothers and sisters. It is sad, but it is true. When, when we come upon difficulties and challenges in our lives, we dig deep into ourselves, we search every, every ounce of strength that we have. We go to the length of our abilities, trying to find a solution. When God is right there, saying, turn to me, my child. And this era of coronavirus, it is no less. You watch the nations across the world struggle to find their own solutions. And it sounds almost foolish to say, turn to God. In fact, the cynics would laugh at us. When you say, look to God and turn to God as if the God we serve has no power and is unable to do anything. Verse 21 informs us that we have confidence in God through Jesus Christ. And you know, one of the, one of the important things for me that God did in sending Christ to the earth he gives us the physical presence of God in our midst so that we don't have to wonder whether God is real. We don't have to think like those who say God is the figment of the imagination because we have Christ in physical form walking the earth as human beings. And we see the power of God alive in and through him. So Christ reveals to us the presence of God and gives us that which we need to strengthen our faith in God. We do not have to live in fear and uncertainty because Christ reveals a God whom we can count on to navigate us through the storms of our lives and calm our rough seas. We are caught in the middle of a storm, my brothers and sisters. The coronavirus has troubled our waters and is raging a storm within our world. But what of the people of faith? If our first response would be to lock down the churches, even though the government didn't say lock down the churches. It gives us a 10 persons. But 10 persons gathering together to lift up the name of the Lord is powerful. One person, two persons coming together. We can say we can do this from our homes. That's correct. 
We ought to be doing this from our homes. But the place of worship that is dedicated and consecrated is important for several reasons. One, we send a message to the world, to the community, that God is still alive. To those who do not have faith in God, those who do not know God, and those who are troubled in their hearts, when they pass the doors of the church open, they say, yes, there are still people of faith. You know, in church, we offer spiritual food. And we know how important food is for life, right? You can imagine in this coronavirus that all the supermarkets lock up. You can imagine that all the places that offer food lock up and you walk and there is no food. You could order on the internet, but how many persons can order from on the internet? I'm not quarreling with those who have closed the doors. I'm just impressing my brothers and sisters the importance of keeping the doors. Even if it's two persons coming out to worship. Even if it is one person kneeling down at the altar and worshiping, let the symbol of the presence of God be evident in the community. Where is our faith? Where are the people of faith? Is anything too difficult for the Lord? Is anything impossible for our God? Do we serve a God who is powerless? Does God not aware of our situation and what we are going through? Does God not care that his children are perishing. Let me assure us, my brothers and sisters, that God is very much alive and aware of our situation, of the situation we are in. He knows the magnitude of the danger we are facing and he is ready to rescue us from this danger. But we need faith in God. The passage informs us that we can live with confidence because Christ lives. That when we have faith in God, we can live with confidence because we are children of God. As Christians, our positive mental attitude is not as a result of self-help psychological gimmicks that is the result of our relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm reminded of the story in Matthew 14, verses 22 through 36. Jesus sent his disciples on in a boat ahead of him. And when they were in the middle of the ocean, a mighty storm arise, and they were fearful. They were being tossed to and fro on every side. And then they looked across the ocean, and someone was walking towards them. Greater fear gripped to them. But Jesus called out to them, and they assured them, It is I. Do not be afraid. I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, that we are thrown into the middle of a storm, a storm that is rocking the world, but Jesus is walking towards us and he's calling out to us and saying to us, do not be afraid, my child. It is I. But you notice something in that story. Simon Peter, full of faith, Jump up. Lord, if it is you, let me come to you on the water. And Jesus says, come. He stepped out of the boat with confidence and walking towards Jesus. But somehow, and this is the problem with us humanity, you know. 
When God begins to make great things happen in our lives, we forget the God we are serving. Somehow, Simon Peter forgot that it was faith. It was by faith that he was walking. He began to, to believe in himself. He began to dig in himself. What is this? I am walking on water. And yet the result was obvious. He began to sink. But thank God he had the, the initiative to cry out to the Lord in a moment when he was failing. I believe, my brothers and sisters, that this is typical of us human beings. It is typical of us when God has, has, has lifted us and given us something, something great that is happening to us. We step out in our own might and strength and forget that there is a God. Forget the God who has called us. And we begin to walk in the might and power of ourselves. But that is when we sink. That is when we are going down. But like the Apostle Peter, if we remember to cry out to the Lord, what did Jesus do? He reached out his hand and lifted him out of the mighty angry waves. But Jesus didn't leave it there. He didn't let Peter get away with it. He chastised him. Where is your faith? Oh, he of little faith. In difficult times, my brothers and sisters, it is not a moment for us to give up. In the midst of the storms of our lives, it is not a moment for us to give up. It is a time for us to remember who it is that holds the ocean in place. Who it is that casts the stars in the sky. Who it is that calls day and night to follow each other. Who it is that keeps this globe spinning in open, empty space. And in the father, we need to remember the source of our strength and our power. And if we think, say, God, now I have no answer to the coronavirus, think again. And, and it's typical of what is going to happen to Peter now. When God has put the initiative into somebody to find a cure, then forget, say, it was God. And start to take the glory and the honor to themselves. That's what Peter did. God says, come. He stepped out of the boat and he started walking, but then he began to believe in himself about how great he was walking on water. Let me pray, friends, that when God has given the initiative to find the antidote for the virus, that due honor and praise will be given to God. We are traveling in our stormy sea. We can recognize Jesus and remove our fears. Or we can travel the journey trusting in ourselves. And allow our fears to consume us. But Jesus is certainly calling to us. The question is, are we listening to his voice? Do we recognize this voice?